I'm here at the San Diego Zoo Safari Park, finding out what it takes to feed over 3,000 animals on a daily basis. Animal nutrition and human nutrition, is there much of a difference? So I would say yes, because human nutrition is one species. We okay. tend to know a lot <laughs> about humans. Right. So then what we do is we kind of, for zoo nutrition, we're looking about what's the nearest match. A great example would be, um, actually, we're looking at lots of bird diet prep here. The closest match that we have for all of our birds is a chicken. Makes sense. I'm noticing the food being prepped here is a little different. There's some mice over there. and So we've got a couple of different stations and for hygiene purposes, exactly as you would have in a normal right. kitchen, um, food is prepped in different areas. So there is some meat and there are some other items that we'll get to. Um, but we definitely have a, a, a sort of fruit and veg uh, station over here. Okay. And then some of the food will already have been chopped and that's what we're working on here is using some of that and adding it to hornbill diets. And that's what you're gonna see just okay. here. And they're working from recipe books, right? right? Is that per species or specific animals within? It's a little bit of both. Um, so between the, the safari park in the zoo, we have um, close to 800 species, and that's that's pretty big. And what's in here already? Some of the, the fruit salad. This is a processed meat. It's almost like a sausage, but it has extra nutrition in it to make it more balanced. Then there's different pellets are balanced for different species. And then we've got a few little rodents in there. In fact, the fruit and vegetables that we use for feeding our animals come from exactly the same supplier that um, we use for our guests. Right. So it's restaurant grade quality. It's not a lower grade no. food. No. And you, I mean, when you think about it, it makes sense. Our animals are incredibly important to us. Many of them are species that are in very threatened. So it makes no sense to cut corners on the quality of the food because um, that could have consequences for their health. Hi, what is going on this over is here? Cassandra, um, and she is helping make some of our mammal diets. Now I'm making some biscuits for the keepers. Um, these are going to be helping them uh, either with training or with moving animals from exhibits so they can clean exhibits. Okay. This, these biscuits are like really highly desirable, so it lures them away from where they need to be. So uh, I think these, I always like to sniff food. They're a, a candy equivalent. Okay. Um, so that the animals will get really right, motivated for them. By them. Exactly. What's next? Okay, so you're ready to go out into the field and see some of the animals we've been talking about? Yes. Okay, <laughs> let's go. I hope it's going to stay dry for you, but now you're going out into the field with Jillian and you're going to get to feed some of the animals that you were making the diets for. This, this is morning. what I've been waiting for. <laughs> Excellent. Enjoy. Thank you. We're going to go put pellet in giraffe feeders and hay in hay feeders um, and stuff like that first. The way we feed our giraffe is different than the way we feed every other animal in here. Okay. Every other animal is a grazer um, out here, so they'll be like eating off the ground. So low feeders make sense. So for our giraffe, we like to put uh, food up high for them, more natural, okay. you know, as they would be pulling leaves off of a tree or right. something like that. That's good. These guys are getting what we call wild air plus. Um, it's a more special formulated pellet for the giraffe. Right. So we feed it up in these high feeders um, to ensure that the giraffe get it and yeah. not everybody else. Right. <laughs> Although the giraffe like other pellet too. Will they come over here as you're filling these? Yes, yeah. First thing in the morning, we usually get followed and usually they're eating it as we're dumping it in the, in oh the feeder. Oh my so. gosh. Good job. There you go. Here's your oh first customer. Gosh. Here's the bar you coming over. Oh my God. <laughs> there you go. How much do they eat a day? We feed five 50 pound bags of pellet and we'll usually go through about a whole bale of alfalfa is what we offer them um, as far as what each one eats. Right. Kind of hard to say. Oh yeah, and their slobber is very 
uh, viscous, I guess you would say. It's um, okay. And so they, uh, <laughs> so they would spend most of their day in the wild. They would be eating off of acacia trees, and a lot of them are thorny acacia. Oh, so the okay. having that real thick saliva uh, helps protect their tongue. How do you know? if each specific animal is getting the amount they need. So part of our day is definitely, you know, we'll go around and we'll throw food out in all these feeders and then we'll spend a lot of our day uh, making observations and, you know, who's eating where, who's eating what, what, you know, and if we see a specific animal or a specific species even that maybe isn't getting enough food um, or they're being like pushed out by other animals, uh, then we will make every effort we can to make sure that they get their proper amount. What do the rhinos eat? The rhinos get the specialized pellet because we figured out that, that what was in that pellet was slowing their reproduction. And um, so it took science to figure it out and it was the phytoestrogens that was in the alfalfa. And so what we did is uh, they broke it all down and they looked at the gut of the rhino and what was going on and they were able to figure out that these phytoestrogens that are high in alfalfa we're causing infertility in the southern white rhino. So we went a long span here at the park without having any southern white rhino babies. So we changed them over to this new diet and soon after we ended up with kids on the ground. So wow. it was pretty cool. So now we are back to helping the southern white rhino population. So pretty nice. So how are the different ways you're feeding them in the enclosure? How does that compare to how they'd be eating in the wild? Right, so we feed them in different areas to kind of entice them to move to different areas also. Okay. So right in the wild, they're not going to stay in exactly one spot and eat. You know, right. they will be moving, they'll be moving with their herd. So it kind of gives them the opportunity to kind of do the same thing. You know, they'll go from feeder to feeder, eating little bits and pieces okay. here and there. So. Spread throughout. Yeah, okay. yeah, making everybody and happy. How many times a day do you do this? Uh, typically right now, we're doing it twice a day. Again, a total of about seven bales of hay goes throughout the exhibit. A day. A day, and usually we feed about 13 bags of pellet out there. Jillian, thank you so, so much. This was an experience I will remember for the rest of my life. Um, thank you for showing me a day in your life. It was unbelievable. Thanks for watching. For more how to make it, click here.